Ciao. This is Mark Marcantonio. I'm excited because today I finally received the um, main component of what is soon to be a fluid bed system that I am going to be starting a build on. I haven't built one before. This will be my first time, so I don't know for certain it's all going to work perfectly, but we're going to give it a shot and you can walk through this with me and put together what appears to be a relatively simple system much better way of painting your jigs and weights and be able to get a good even coat on them. Today, I finally received the air pump that I had been waiting for. I got this off of Amazon. It is a Higger adjustable air pump, model number HG041. It's four watts of power. It's built for a 300 gallon aquarium. It's got a couple features, which is why I picked it out. As you're gonna learn as I go through this process, if you don't already know about me, I don't necessarily like to take the cheapest route to everything. I like to take what I believe is going to be the best route to getting a project done. So I look for quality components and I like the features on this one. Hopefully it'll live up to the hype and we'll see. So let's go ahead and unbox this and show you what it is. Comes with the instruction manual comes with some flexible silicone tubing, air tubing, which we're going to use. We'll set that aside. It also comes with uh, some air stones and a couple check valves, which we won't be using. Uh, these are intended for aquariums and who knows, if the fluid bed project doesn't work out, maybe I'll be building a 300 gallon aquarium project and then I will use those. Okay, here's the main event. Here's the, the air pump. And I'll tell you why I was attracted to this particular one. First of all, it's got silicone uh, pedestals that it sits on, which makes it very quiet. Uh, it makes no noise supposedly, or the noise is very minimal. Uh, and one of the things that I liked also is that the air outlets that are installed on this pump are made out of metal. So they're stainless steel air outlets and it has a fully adjustable rotary knob that can control the airflow. So supposedly it can be controlled all the way from nothing, all the way up to full power. So I'll be able to get that fine adjustment that I want. Give you a little closer look at this so you can see what it looks like. And it's got a fairly long cord on it too, so it'll be able to reach my, my outlet. So the, the plan here is to run two of the airlines, two of this airlines, cut it, and one from each of those outlets. And then I will run the airline over to a manifold. This is an old manifold that I've had for an aquarium. I'll run one of the tubes from the pump to this side, and I'll run the second one over to this side. And then that'll leave me with three branches off of the manifold to go to three different um, fluid beds that I'm going to build. And these have adjustments on them so that you can adjust the airflow on each one individually. If that works, great. If it doesn't work well in conjunction with the adjustment knob on the air pump, then I'll go ahead and install a different rotary type airflow adjustment valve. We'll see how it goes. And the other thing I like about this manifold is that I'm going to store this and all of my fluid beds inside a small milk crate on the shelf underneath my workbench. And then when I go to use it, I'll just pull the fluid beds out and the manifold, the manifold will, will fit right over top of, of, actually I'll put it like with the valves underneath, I'll put it over my bench and the air lines will come from under this and they go into grooves over here and wrap right around and come out of the manifold and head over to my air uh, fluid beds. So it'll, it'll hook and go just like this. And the airline will go to my fluid beds. The fluid beds will look like this. I haven't put this all together yet. When I compress it all down, it'll be a smaller height, but uh, fluid beds are, um, we'll go over all the details and components of this and I'll show you how I'm gonna put this together next. Okay, let's start putting together the fluid beds. I already put one ahead uh, together. I jumped ahead, put one together. And let me show you what I did with this. 
Um, you can see this is just about finished. It's got everything but the filter in it, which I'll go ahead and put in. But in the inside, I, uh, I put a rubber grommet over the end of the tube. This one of these black rubber grommets. Not something you have to do by any means. Again, this is just something that I'm doing because I think it'll hold up a little better because I plan to keep this in a milk crate and move it back and forth, move it around on my bench. And I wanted something to be real solid without reflecting, restricting the airflow. So I put some rubber grommets on and you can see the rubber grommets on the inside. So it's a nice clean look on the outside. And I'll show you how I put this together. Uh, let me go ahead and put the, show you how the filter goes in. You just unscrew the top part of this um, solvent joint. It's got a rubber o-ring inside, which I like. Then you take a, this is 20 pound copy paper. You can use a lunch bag, brown paper bag, and that works well too. This option gives me the ability to easily change it to whatever style uh, filter that I would like, filter or diffuser, whatever you want to call it. When you screw it down, it compresses it against that rubber gasket, and then you end up with a nice uh, bottom, nice tight bottom there that you can change and change out. So, okay, how did I put this together? First thing we do is I take this flat cap that I bought, PVC, two inch PVC. I take the salt, two inch solvent union, and I put the flat cap underneath. And let's do it on this one too. And then you gotta compress this fully inside there. And it can be, it's a very tight fit. In fact, I'm gonna set it on the, on the ground and step on it. There, okay. Now, I, let me take it apart and show you. That cap is, is fully inside all the way down to the edge. It's all the way inserted now, nice and tight. Next thing to do is to put the three and a half inch piece in the top part and similar process. It's just a friction fit. Push it in real tight. And again, I'm gonna step on it. And the key is there's a little gap between the top and the uh, end of the solvent joint. And I wanna make that gap go away because I don't want paint to get stuck up in there. So I'll set that on the ground and step on it. Now it's inserted fully in here and there is no gap for paint to get trapped into or disrupt the airflow. That's done. No, no sealant is needed. That way, if for whatever reason I need to take it apart, I can. And the next step, and by the way, these are the caps that I bought and they'll go on top to seal it. A two inch test cap might be preferable and I didn't have it, they didn't have any at the store so I, I bought these caps instead. I'm not convinced on which one I'm going to use yet. I may use these or I may use test caps if I can, once I get them and try them out and see. So the next step is to drill a hole. So I'm going to drill a hole through the base to let the air hose go through. I'm going to take a piece of tape, any type of tape, and I'll stick it on there. And that'll help keep the drill bit from walking on me. I like it all to be nice and neat. Take your drill. Drill through, all the way through, both the... There you go, that makes it nice and clean. It'll make a nice clean edge by having gone through that tape. You end up with a nice clean edge. And now my hose will fit through the hole. I'm gonna take the rubber grommet off. I'm going to put the hose through and I'll put it through far enough that I can grab hold of it. It's a pretty tight fit already. Probably wouldn't even let air go through the connection point just because of the fit, but I'm going to go ahead, grab the end of that, and pull it up to where I can work with it, feed more tube through. Uh, 
Okay. I've got the tube fed through, sticking out the top. I'm going to put this grommet on. Again, this is just me being anal, but I'm going to do it because I think it'll work a little better for me in the long run. So I'm going to take some Loctite flexible adhesive. Uh, plumber's goop would work great. Marine goop would work even better. Uh, any type of silicone will work. Uh, I want this so that if I ever do change my mind, I still can can uh, remove all of this. And so what I'm going to do now is slide this rubber grommet on. Leave about a half inch poking through, maybe three quarters. I'm going to put this salt, this um, glue on it, adhesive. And then I'm going to slide the grommet up a little to get the adhesive inside. And then I'm going to pull all this right back through the hole till it's flush on the inside. And now I've got it fully inside and it'll be glued against the inside there it'll give it a nice firm connection it'll be airtight the tube goes roughly to the center of the bottom chamber of the fluid bed and now i've got two of them finished and then i'll go ahead and do the third and then we'll go ahead and check it out okay in the process of constructing this i figured out that it was a lot easier to go ahead and take the solvent unit apart when you're gluing in the tube and because you're working with a much smaller item it's much easier to do so I've got the grommet in I've got the cement in there and the flexible cement and now we just need to wait and let it cure up by the way let me show you how I plan to store this I've got the manifold right here with my three hoses hooked up to it my control valves which you can adjust. I happen to have a, a grommet laying around that had two holes side by side that were the perfect diameter for the hoses. So I went ahead and threw it on there since I had it already. Here's my milk crate that I plan to store everything in. And you can see I've got my pump in there. Just set it in there. I'll be able to set all three of these uh, fluid bed units inside. I'll be able to Take the manifold, drop it in, the air hoses. When I use it, I just stick it back on my workbench and I'll be able to store the whole thing away and it will be out of the way. Again, here's the cement that I went and used, the Loctite flexible cement, clear cement. And um, you could use, like I say, anything. Since I've got time while I'm waiting for parts to glue together and stay cemented together. I'll mention something else that I do to make them look a little better. I use some lacquer thinner. You could use any of a number of different solvents and some sandpaper. And I removed all the markings off the tubes. I removed the red writing on there, stripes and the black barcode and all that and made it nice and clean looking. And I did, did that on all the caps, did it off of the bottom of the caps, removed the price tags and all. So everything looks nice and clean until I get paint all over it. So just thought I'd mention that also for those of you who are anal like me. Um, you could also, it only takes a few minutes and it's easy to do, makes them look a lot better. Okay, let's go ahead and assemble these. Take my paper uh, filter median, stick it on top, put the upper part of the solvent union on it and just screw it on down. nice and tight and now it's ready to go ready to put the paint in take the powder paint you can dump it in and it is ready to go okay paper on top
All right. That's basically how I'm going to set it up. Be able to take my forceps that I use, put my jig on it, jig hook, heat it up with my heat gun here, and then take take it and just dip it in. We'll see how these the length of these tubes work out. These are three and a half inches. The upper part, some people do it three inches. I'm sure I'll have my own personal preference once I put them in use and decide, determine what works best for me. So that is basically how we put it together. Then when I'm done, like I say, I'll take the manifold off my workbench. I'll take all three of these and I'll stick them inside my milk crate. It's all in one unit and I can just stick it under the, the workbench and my workbench is clean lets me do other activities. So we'll uh, do another, another part of this video with the actual painting, see how it works out. start with the valves closed. Okay, so I'm getting the hang of it after a little bit. These, these valves actually do a very good job of adjusting the flow. Let's start to see what the painting process uh, looks like. I'll show you first. There's my pump down in my crate. I've got it turned on. And I've got it turned on to the low, almost the lowest setting. And we'll go ahead and slide that back up under there. And I've put, I've made some jigs, football jigs, getting ready to go ahead and paint those. I've got the valve adjusted i've got the you can see that the paint is moving all around in there pretty good makes and it makes it nice and fluffy and stir it up a little bit and it's uh that air coming up underneath just pushes that whole column of paint powder up in the air and suspends it like a cloud in the air which makes it very easy to dip a, a jig into it and we'll go ahead and get that started got a old baking pan that I put some pieces of clothes hanger across put a little bit of copper wire around it to keep the jigs from sliding back and forth and it makes for a, a nice rack that when I'm painting my jigs I can go ahead and drop them on top of there until they cool and you'll also notice that I've got heat shrink that I put on top of the eyes and after I've dipped it into the paint I can just go ahead and pull that heat shrink off and the eye is nice and clean that way I get, the heat shrink I picked up on Amazon here's the heat shrink that I'm using it's just 1 8 inch heat shrink tubing big roll of it lasts you a long time no worries there. I'll turn my heat gun on. I cut up some of that heat shrink tubing, put it inside this canister, so they're all pre-cut, ready to go. Take four sets, put them onto my jig, heat the jig up. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Grab a piece of heat shrink, stick it over the eye, put it back in front, shrink it down. Now I can dip it. 
one quick dip. Powder coat is all on there evenly. Put it in front of the heat gun for a second to flash it. Get it to. There's what you end up with. And then I just drop it on top of my rack. Grab the next one. <laughs> Nice, even coat. These are Gamakatsu number 111 jig head hooks. It's a four-aught size. This hook has an O'Shaughnessy bend, and this hook is deadly on hooking fish. Largemouth and smallmouth bass. That O'Shaughnessy bend makes it easy for the fish to pick it up off the bottom, and it is, you hook them, and you land them with this hook. Nice and even. And at any point bef before the baking process, I can go ahead and remove the shrink tubing that's on there. Just grab it by with a pair of needle nose pliers and wiggle it off and end up with a nice clean eye. Nice clean eye. Ready to bake. Okay. So hopefully that gives you an idea of uh, how to build your own fluid bed. When you're done, put your cap on, keep the paint inside. And then when I'm finished now, like I say, I can pick all these up put them down inside my crate and they're out of the way so that I can continue on with other projects like tying on jig skirts with my uh, vise and I'll show you that in a separate video. Hope you enjoyed it. This is Mark Marcantonio. Ciao.